Much ado about nothing. Blow a wind and grab your cheeks. Rain, blow. Add to the unclear patch on. Show me evil brother. <laughs> King Lear. To be or not to be. Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. Come along, everyone. Come along, come along. You know we have a great banquet tonight and entertainment and a feast. Where are my cooks? Where are my cooks? Where are they? Here. You're here, right. Can you get on, please, with the banquet? The king has especially asked for roast boar this evening. Hurry up. Where are my cleaners? How can you make Shakespeare work for all ages and abilities in the primary classroom? Get on with it. Hurry up. Straight away. Joe Fife is the drama teacher at Wimbledon Park Primary School in South London. Today, she's working with two different Year 6 groups on Hamlet. With these two classes, there's 25 in each class, and every year we look at a different play. And this has been a bit of a stab in the dark for me because I haven't done Hamlet before. I never studied it at school. I knew absolutely nothing about it. Entertainers, are they here yet? Oh, you're here. We started with the portrait shot of the family being happy with King Hamlet and his wife and the prince and Polonius and Ertes and Ophelia. So we started with a photograph and then we started looking at the relationships between all the characters. To be or not to be. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. Before you tackle a speech like that, they have to have a really good understanding of his character. And I thought we'd done all the groundwork about that. So I, I think they really understood his turmoil. He probably wants to die because of all the things that Claudius has done to Hamlet, his father. Yeah. What might this be? Take arms against the sea of troubles. To be strong, it could be. Brave. To be brave. Maybe because you're brave. Okay. But I now want you just to concentrate on the beauty of the language. Put your lining on the floor in front of you. And I want you and your partner to read your line out loud three times. And if you've got a problem with any pronunciation, put your hand up. Or to take arms against the sea of troubles. Or to take arms against the sea of troubles. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come. For in that sleep of death, when you have shuffled off this mortal coil. We're looking at a soliloquy, we're looking at a monologue. It's like ingredients of a cake, layer by layer, like making a lasagna. So we discuss the meaning. Then we say the words out loud, get used to the feeling of the words. Then we talk about different ways in which we can say the lines. Then we think about how we might move to portray the emotion behind those words. I want you to say your line loudly like a proclamation. Twice, off you go. To die, to sleep, to sleep, to sleep, to sleep a chance to dream. I bless the rub. Working with the language is something that probably puts a lot of teachers off because I think we're all intimidated, aren't we? But the thing that amazes me is the children aren't ever intimidated by the language. And I think if you just use small chunks of it and the children are only ever having to deal with a, a tiny part of it, they can actually enjoy the rhythm and the beauty of the language without always having to know exactly what it means. To be or not to be. In Joe's other year six class, they've moved on to writing their own words for a speech by Ophelia. We looked at Hamlet's famous speech, to be or not to be, that is the question. What is the dilemma that Ophelia is debating in her mind? And, and, it, and if I obey, oh, no, or obey, yeah. Hamlet. Okay. To please my loving Hamlet, or, or obey my wicked father. I think it should be quite sad, probably. Like, should I, should I not? Express my love to the one I love, should I? I want them to think of a, a new situation, like with Ophelia, and creating her speech, her dilemma, waiting with those letters to give them back to her loved one. And I think if they're creating 
a new bit of speech that we don't already know about, I think it really shows me their understanding of the character if they can write from their point of view. To obey or not obey, the choice has not yet spoken. Shall I follow my heart or my father? Express my love. To the one I love, should I or should I not? To be heartbroken or to love? It's all been very heavy and so passionate and now the players have arrived. Once they found out about Hamlet's plan of the play within the play, they were very excited about it because they were desperate to know Claudius's reaction because they're still not quite sure whether he did it or not. <gasps> Players, people like me, it is so good for you to be here. Come nearer, I have a secret for the king. Please be seated, come nearer. As you know, my mother has recently married to my uncle, who I love dearly, and I have decided to put on a special play for him. I wish you to make me a silent movie of this story for the king. He will be over the moon. I often find with the Shakespeare, the biggest thing they get out of it is being able to work as a company. It's not individuals, they're working as a company to tell the story. We have to use our actions and our faces to show all the characters in the story. Would you like to know who's in the story? I think there's so much about confidence, speech, understanding of literature, understanding a story, characterisation, motives. I think the list is endless. Hands up if you are familiar with these newfangled toys. I see you have been to university too, fantastic. Okay, on your card it will say your characters. Hamlet will be the director holding the camera. Actually, can I, can, can I be the son? Want, okay. Want well, to be the Duke's brother, the evil person, okay? Be the Duke. And the Duke, he's the Duchess. Okay. You put on the Duke's crown. I wear the Duke's crown. Be... And marry the Duchess. Yeah, and become Duke of the land. If you can just film what you've got so far. So group act one, where are you? Okay, act one, off you go. Annabel Gray is preparing her Year 3 class at Queen's Park Primary in London to perform some scenes from King Lear at their local secondary school. The great thing about King Lear is that it's very much like a fairy tale at the beginning. You know, you've got the three children, the two bad ones, the one, one good one, like the ugly sisters and Cinderella, that type of thing. And it's, it's, I think it's a great opening to a story. Goneril and Regan were not very nice queens. And their father, King Lear, went to go and live with first Goneril and then Regan, and they were really, really mean to him. They took away his armies. They said, we don't care about you, Dad. We're in charge now. And he's had enough. He is so upset. He's done everything that he could for his daughters. He's given them his kingdom, and they have betrayed him. So he goes up onto this heath, and it's really, really windy, and it's raining, and it's thundering, and it's lightning. And he starts to talk to the weather. And these are some of the things that he says. 
Shall we have a go reading some of these together? Blow wings and crack your cheese, rage blow! A lot of the Shakespearean lines are very hard, you know, even for adults to understand, so I took lines which I thought the children could pick out. Oh, that might mean that, that might be about the rain, that might be about the storm. Um, and then just had eight lines and eight groups. We're talking to the weather, so where might we be looking? Annabelle's being helped out by NQT Tammy, who's coming to terms with teaching Shakespeare herself. Okay, one, two, three. Here I stand, your slave. slave. I've had a very limited experience of Shakespeare. I did a bit in year eight, year nine. So when I got told about this project, I found it to be quite daunting, just you know, thinking about how the children are going to react to the language and how I personally was going to teach the language. Rumble thy belly full. OK, now, what about these next four words? So, spit, fire, spout, rain. How can we show those? Show me how to show those. Spit, fire and spout, rain. The children do have an understanding of what's going, which is more than I thought they would. I didn't think they'd actually understand it as well as they did. Blow in and crack your cheeks. Rain, blow. Spout till you dread out About 50% of them have got special educational needs. Um, they kind of came up to me from year two, very passive, didn't want to get involved in their, in their learning. And drama is something that's really helped out with that. For the majority of them, English is their second language. For them, all language is difficult, all language is new. So, you know, whether it's old Shakespearean language or, you know, language in a book that they're reading at home, it's still all quite new to them. I wanted them to be able to get the feeling that they were themselves on the heath. And I think sound's a great way to do that. And you can soundscape almost anything. I think there's so much value in doing Shakespeare at primary school. If anything, I think it's the time you should be doing it. We're going to perform the final piece at Paddington Academy, which is a secondary school where a lot of the children will go. It's lovely for them to do it in a big theatre. They get so excited about it and they have costumes and music. And I also think it's good for the secondary school because they get a chance to see, wow, look at these little year three children doing Shakespeare. They won't necessarily understand all of what's going on, but they get a feel of the drama and the passion and the comedy. And so they automatically have a love for this word Shakespeare. They don't see it as being something that's out of reach and an intellectual sort of academic thing. They just see it as a great story. Mm -hmm.